Hi there, I'm Javen Baker, and this is going to be the start of the series on the undead, so stay tuned and be ready. <laughs> So, where does one start with undead? And why would one want undead in their campaign? Well, the basic premise of undead is that they're meant to be spooky, essentially. They're meant to be dark and mysterious. And a lot of the times, um, you know, if you've fought in skeletons or zombies or whatever a million times, your party members, odds are, aren't going to be scared of them per se anymore. But their characters definitely could be. And the idea is is that, you know, your average adventurer wouldn't ever run into something that had died and then come back to life. It's pretty far-fetched for the most part, um, depending upon your campaign, I guess. But that being said, uh, the first one I've chosen for our Undead series, we'll say, is Skeletons. And I've always liked the second edition Skeleton. Um, you can see his arms are kind of lashed together and his one leg is busted off and lashed together there you go that's a little better and it gives you just a cool little idea that um you know a skeleton could have its arm busted off and the necromancer just puts a little band around it puts the bones back together and animates them and stuff so it makes for some you can always have uh really interesting skeletons that way, make them unique in, uh, in the way that they're put together. Um, another cool thing you can do is, you know, have a hand bone where a foot might be, and or where an arm was cut off and an elbow, they have a, a shin leading into a foot, you know, and it's just really cool things you can do that way with skeletons. Um, so what is a skeleton other than skeleton so to speak um skeletons as with all undead are typically magically animated um they're created as guardians or warriors by powerful necromancers and powerful priests typically um they ha appear to have no ligaments so as you can see um there's no like ligaments still connecting the bone or sinew or um, muscles or anything like that um so they shouldn't actually be able to move, but they're magically joined together. And the magic of the necromancy that's, you know, used during an animate dead spell um, allows them full range of movements um, almost as if they were normal. Like, they move still, typically, depending upon the edition, they move just as fast as any human. So that's really something to point out. Um, they have no eyes or internal organs. Um, they can be made from any number of bones. So they can be made from humans, demi-humans, animals of human size or smaller, um, giant humanoids like bugbears and giants. And that'll get into a lot of the times uh, a little bit different uh, of a skeleton. Um, there are specific giant ones that we'll talk about later. But you can assume we'll call them monster skeletons for this, for the sake of this video. So, in combat, what do what do skeletons do? Well, normal skeletons almost always fight with weapons. Um, a lot of them will have shields too, depending upon how they're outfitted by their, um, by their necromancer. And one of the nice things you can do is in higher level adventuring, you can actually give your skeletons magical weapons and things like that to make them more of a force to be reckoned with, you know. What do you do with all those plus one swords? You know, where do all the plus one swords go in the world at high level? Well, maybe the necromancer got them and gave them all to his skeletons. Just something to think about that's kind of cool. Um, they usually do fight with rusted weapons, though, like swords and spears. They're usually given the bottom of the barrel. Um, because of their magical nature, a lot of times they're not fighting at, like, full damage, and most editions will have them do a set damage. It's usually not a weapon damage. So that's something to keep in, in mind, that they don't have the muscles and the magic isn't quite as strong as, you know, a 17 strength fighter. So they're not going to deal as much damage. Um, animal skeletons, um, you know, like, uh, let's say cats, dogs, 
kangaroos. I mean, there's literally no limit to what you can have them do. Typically, we'll inflict less damage depending upon the uh, addition. But they're really cool to add in and splash in along with some of the normal skeletons because it kind of breaks up the monotony of all we're fighting skeletons again. You know, it gives you something cool to look at. Another cool thing to note is that you can do like skeletal rats or like birds and stuff. And that makes for some really cool things because you can really freak some people out with that. And, uh, you know, just use your imagination and don't just say, oh, there's some skeletons. You know, tr try to try to make your skeletons unique and you'll find they're a lot more fun to fight and a lot more fun to run if you make them unique. Um, monster skeletons, those, these are your larger ones, are almost always constructed from humanoid creatures. So bugbears, um, minotaurs, orcs, gnolls, giants. Um, these skeletons are typically like your large creatures, like I just had listed, and they will a lot of the times fight with weapons and use weapon damage. They just don't get strength bonuses, essentially, of their of their counterparts. So if you have a troll skeleton, it's not going to get the plus whatever, depending upon addition, damage that it would get normally. It's just you take away their damage, but you can have them fight with weapons, which is really cool. Um, so let's talk about what they're immune to. Well, they're undead, so they're immune to sleep, charm, hold, and pretty much any mind-affecting spell. Um, they, they are non-intelligent, zero intelligence. They can only be commanded by who created them or who has turned them or anything like that. So remember that they just cannot be affected by mind spells or abilities. Because they're assembled from bones, a lot of the times uh, cold-based attacks do no damage. So like your chilling ray... Ice storm, sleet storm, stuff like that. They'll still, like, if you ice over the floor, they'll still have to make dexterity checks and things like that. But for the most part, they're, they're not affected by cold damage-wise. Um, now, the one big thing about skeletons that is, in my, I think, has held true throughout editions is that so since they're empty, their rib cages, there's you know just the spine. There's not a whole lot of mass to them. It means that slashing and piercing weapons like swords, daggers, spears, arrows, blah blah blah, only do half damage. Um, and this goes to the idea that there's no like living tissue to rip through, and it's not as effective using a sword on a skeleton and things like that. Um, blunt weapons like your Maces, um, Morning Stars technically could work because they do deal bludgeoning damage. Hammers, um, if someone wants to use the butt end of their spear and fight with that and, you know, try to go for sweeping attacks instead of, you know, a stabbing attack, um, you know, give the players that. Don't ever tell your players, though, that, oh, you, you only dealt three damage. If they tell you they did six smile and wave and uh just write down three and just tell them yep you hit it um don't ever i made the mistake when i first started playing with my group of saying oh, your attack doesn't seem like it did that well um just let the players think that they that they have more hit points and if uh, one player does happen to have a blunt weapon and pulls it out when you're fighting a skeleton for some reason if it's beyond player character knowledge um, and they all of a sudden they're, you know, they hit for four damage and their skeletons are dying way quicker. Players might catch on, but, uh, leave it up to the players to figure out, especially if they're newer. Um, that's one thing that when you play the game for a long time, you miss is monsters that you don't know what they are, don't know what they do, how to fight them. It makes a challenge. So let your players enjoy that as long as they can. Now for your older players, what you can do is you can always, um, like I said, they're going to know how to fight skeletons for the most part um, with your players who have played before, but what you can do is just make the skeletons interesting. 
you know, give them a magical weapon, or give them a weapon that's enchanted only for them, or enchant the skeleton itself. You can make the skeletons a little tougher, um, because they're not very tough to begin with. It's the fact that they have some immunities that make them really nasty to deal with. Or, another cool one that you can do for your skeletons um, in combat is make regenerating skeletons. Um, and what I would do is I would double the XP on them if you did this. But, um, or even triple or quadruple, depending upon what the XP value is, you know, or your creature rating can go up on them, depending upon. But if you want to make a regenerating skeleton, what you do is you just have their, their eyes glow where normally they wouldn't. Um, and maybe the, there's a low level necromancer in the area that as long as he's alive, they keep regenerating. Or maybe there's a small, like, not really a phylactery, but... Um, something along those lines, a magical uh, jar, essentially, that holds an essence that will keep refueling the zombies, or, or sorry, refueling the skeletons and allowing them to regenerate. And that can really be a cool change for some newer players, because it doesn't really make them any more difficult to destroy, it just makes them have to think about how to destroy them. Um... That's a little bit out of combat. We'll, t we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, depending upon addition, uh, fire usually does basic damage against skeletons, what it would normally do. Um, holy water um, always does decent damage against skeletons, um, you know, per vial that's used on them or whatever. So holy water is always good to have, and clerics are really good to have for fighting skeletons. Um, they're immune to fear spells, and they never check morale. They're, they're brainless. They're commanded to do something, and they do it till they fall into pieces with loud clunks and rattles. Um, habitat society. Um, skeletons have no social life or interesting habits. They're found pretty much anywhere where anybody large or powerful enough to raise them could be. Um, priests of neutral deities, a lot of the times in the older editions, had the ability to like raise... Not, or not raise, but, um, it's not turn, there's really no good term for it, um, we'll call it convert. A lot of the times they had the ability to convert undead, so, like, they could find three skeletons that were raised by a necromancer, and they could roll their turn undead, and it would allow them to come over to their side. So that's kind of something you can always, you know, try out. Um, that's true for neutral and evil um, clerics. Good clerics um, are the only ones, um, if as long as their deity allows it, that can turn um, and give final rest to undead. So, for example, a good cleric of, let's say, um, Lyra, the goddess of joy in the Forgotten Realms. Um, if they wanted to turn undead, they would turn undead, and a lot of times they could disintegrate them at higher levels and things like that. And having a cleric really makes fighting undead a breeze, essentially. Mm. It's also kind of interesting to note that raising undead is a strictly evil alignment choice, depending upon what edition you're playing. Now, for example, the idea is um, there's an eternal rest of any being or animal, and that's like sacred to the laws of order. And every good deity would disapprove of it. Some neutrals might not care. Evils would probably encourage it. So just think about that. You know, if your good one, if your good cleric finds an animate dead spell and says, like, "I want to raise a bunch of dead," and you're like, oh, "That's kind of evil," remind your players of that. Keep them in, keep them in check. Um, so the basic skeletons are pretty dumb. Um, they're actually not even dumb; they're non sentient. They have no intelligence whatsoever. They can only understand one or two orders, like phrase orders. Um, they fight in unorganized masses. They botch complex orders disastrously. Um, it's not unheard of to find more than one type of skeleton working together. 
the Necromancer just raises whatever available, essentially. Unless the um, skeletons remains are, you know, pushed apart, um, if the Necromancer comes back along and has Animate Dead memorized, you can zap them and they're back up. So, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, that's skeletons in a nutshell. Um, that's just a little overview. Um, spice them up. Make your skeletons unique. It will be more memorable for your players. Um, if you have experienced players, um, try regenerating skeletons. It definitely will make them turn their head and think twice, um, especially if they fought skeletons before in a previous campaign. Newer players, let them discover the skeletons' strengths and weaknesses on their own. You know, don't don't give them a handout in any way, shape, or form. Um, if they're attacking with swords, just let them attack with swords. If someone happens to Ansley, it's like mainly uses a war hammer and or a blunt weapon, and they're dealing more damage, let them figure it out for themselves. Always let your new players figure it out. Don't ever, 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 ever um, give them the handout. Because one of the things that makes D&D so great is, like I said earlier, I'm rambling a little bit here, but what makes D&D so great is learning yourself. Um, other than that, skeletons, um, being creating them is evil. Um, they don't have an alignment. They're mindless. They're not affected by mind-altering spells. And that's your skeletons in a nutshell.